it's impossible to narrow down like, oh, what's the quote unquote best scene. But do you have some best scenes of the of the run? Oh, man. So there's so many Omar scenes and quotes, you know, come to mind. Um, I it's really because I did. I transferred it into my own personal life. I can't even front to you. You know, when he says to bunk, you know, man's got to have a coat mm-hmm. like that. I believe that shit. <laughs> you hear me? I, I believe the shit. Man does have to have a code. There's got to be a way that you go about. You have to have a certain level of integrity. And while, yeah, he was a, he was a gangster with a shotgun robbing drug dealers, he had a code. He never he did. did anybody who didn't deserve to get got. You know? This is so true. Had, yeah, so, so to me, I think, you know, that that line specifically really, really stands out to me um, when he goes in the courtroom, you know, <laughs> with the tie and <laughs> season two <laughs> looking wild or whatever. Um, again, a lot of I have a lot of Omar stuff uh, when he and brother moves on. Uh, oh, yeah. They finally realize and they kind of when they their first standoff and then when they tag up and they mm-hmm. get string like. That shit was amazing. <laughs> it was like the Hood Avengers. <laughs> oh my god, that's a great analogy. Real talk, man. Like that, that, that's that shit really, really stuck out to me for sure, for real. Um, and then a lot of stuff, even in the early season, I think in season one, D'Angelo when he's on the yard, and he's you know t- mm. teaching him how to play chess and all that stuff. Like, there's just it's there's so so many things that that really really stand out to me. Um, when Michael um, <laughs> uh, does, um, what's my girl's name? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, Snoop. Oh, Snoop. Yeah, yeah when good, Michael does you Snoop. Look good, like, you look good, girl. You look good, girl. Right? And in the Jeep. And I was like, ah. Oh. Like, just the writing in that show was really, really well done. And it really made you care about those characters. So it's hard for me to pick a single scene. But if there's one thing that I took from the show specifically, is what I said earlier is that a man have, has to have a code. And I really do incorporate that in my life. It's funny how a TV show kind of like, you know, puts that into your everyday thinking, if you will. A lot of quotables. Um, one of the ones that comes to mind is Omar in the courtroom when he's mm-hmm. like, you know, basically we're the same, I'm, but you're the one with the briefcase. Yep. yep. You know, I, I like that one. But of course, the one that sticks out is season four with Snoop buying the nail gun. Oh, man. That cold <laughs> opening. Yep. Yes. That was just, it was just perfection because, you know, her and the sales guy, they were speaking different, but the same, you mm-hmm. know, when he's like telling her one thing and she's like, oh, yeah, you know, the kickback, like gunpowder. And he kind of pauses, looks at her. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I, you know, that's what I'm talking about. And then she starts going into the kind of Baltimore lingo. And I think he got lost, but it came yep. back to you. Let me go ahead and get this one because this is what I need it for. <laughs> oh, we do a couple jobs, you know, <laughs> we do eight times. That's so many I think in a really weird way, and even though I don't support the lifestyle and I don't want criminals to be happy, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> when Avon comes back home okay, in season three and Stringer takes him up to like the penthouse. Oh, yeah. And he's like, this is on paper. Mm-hmm. It's all legit, man. It's weird. all yours. And just, and then he gets those things like, this is a rental in case you, until you find out what you want to drive. And then when he walks out, you remember Stringer Bell walks out, comes back, knocks on the door and says, oh, I have something. Uh-huh. Ladies at the door. Oh, yeah. And and then they walk in and he closes the door and he looks and he's like, my man. And just <laughs> oh, man. a moment for this dude who's been in prison and just got back home. And like, that's how we've all like, like I said, I'm not part of that life, but everybody envisions that's how you come home as the kingpin. Absolutely. Don't do your time. You come back. You come home, and that's what it looks like. And I was like, okay, they got the fantasy. He so, got. The- you know, I kind of like um, when Cheese got killed toward mm-hmm. the end of the series. You know, I always felt he was kind of a snake, kind of like Prop Joe. You know, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Prop Joe was a snake too. F- funny, it's funny that he, you know one snake took another snake out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, another scene, it wasn't really on the actual show. I don't know if you remember, like during that last season, they had these like little prequels. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like the um Omar prequel when um him and his brother Nohar Anthony. Yeah. Uh, the guy at the um at the bus stop and he made him give him back the money. Mm-hmm. And then oh speaking of Nohar Anthony, there was another scene with Kima and McNulty that was like um Season one. Believe, yeah, I can't believe y'all know who Nohar Anthony. 
then they told a tale about the um he robbed the jewelry store I have four written down. The scene where uh, Clay Davis is breaking it down. And he's like, I'm going to take any anybody's money he's handed out. Obviously, I'm going to take it. <laughs> um, it's a fantastic scene. Um, uh, the balcony scene yes. with, with Avon and Stringer. And you just, you knew it was hanging in the air. They knew it was hanging in the air. It was this, like, it was this fantastic mix of, like, contempt for each other but also still so much love mm-hmm. and like they're both so committed to their own path that even all even as they're discussing the history you know that it's 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 kind of already been decided I, that scene just really always stuck with me it felt incredibly i don't know real and hard in that you know whatever context of your life there's going to be people who like you thought were going to be with you forever and mm-hmm. you know diff- different paths take you different places and I, I just I love that scene still um, sort of from more of a comedy standpoint Omar taking the stand <laughs> in season two yeah. and where he got the shotgun you got the briefcase uh, line and, and him trying to sort of explain the game and um, seeing the worlds really collide like that you know I think throughout a lot of the wire there's these mm-hmm. amazing characters working within their own circles but some of the best moments in the wire come when like those circles obviously clash and what could have clashed more than omar and you know the courtroom fantastic scene and then ultimately i it's boring i'm sure everyone has mentioned it but season one episode three where d'angelo's explaining chess and king stays the king it's just so iconic it's impossible to narrow down like oh what's the quote unquote best scene but do you have some best scenes of the of the run oh man so there's so many omar scenes and quotes you know come to mind um i it's really because i did i transferred it into my own personal life i can't even front to you you know when he says to bunk you know a man's gotta have a coat mm-hmm. like that i believe that shit <laughs> you hear me i <laughs> i believe the shit a man does have to have a coat there's got to be a way that you go about you have to have a certain level of integrity and while yeah, he was a, he was a gangster with a shotgun, robbing drug dealers. He had a code. He never he did. did anybody who didn't deserve to get got. You know, this is so true. Had, no, yeah. No, so, no. so to me, I think you know that that line specifically really, really stands out to me um, when he goes in the courtroom. You know, with the tie and you know, season two, <laughs> looking wild or whatever. Um, again, a lot of I have a lot of Omar stuff uh, when he and brother moves on. Uh, oh, yeah. They finally realize, and they kind of when they their first standoff, and then when they tag up and they mm-hmm. get string, like that shit was amazing. <laughs> you know? It was like the Hood Avengers. <laughs> oh my god, that's a great analogy. <laughs> real talk, man. Like that, that, that's that shit really, really stuck out to me for sure, for real. Um, and then a lot of stuff, even in the early season, I like think in season one, D'Angelo when he's on the yard, and he's you know t- mm-hmm. teaching him how to play chess and all that stuff. Like, there's just it's there's so so many things that that really really stand out to me. Um, when Michael um, <laughs> uh, does um, what's my girl's name? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, uh, Snoop. Oh, Snoop. Yeah, yeah when good, Michael does you Snoop, look good, like, girl. you look good, girl. Right in in the jeep, and I was like, ah, oh. like just. The writing in that show was really, really well done, and it really made you care about those characters. So it's hard for me to pick a single scene, but if there's one thing that I took from the show specifically is what I said earlier, is that a man have, has to have a code, and I really do incorporate that in my life. It's funny how a TV show kind of like, you know, puts that into your everyday thinking, if you will. Out of quotables, um, one of the ones that comes to mind is Omar in the courtroom when he's mm-hmm. like, you know, basically we're the same, I'm, but you're the one with the briefcase. Yep. yep. You know, I, I like that one, but of course the one that sticks out is season four with Snoop buying the nail gun. Oh man, that cold <laughs> opening. Yep. Yes, that was just it was just perfection because you know her and the sales guy, they were speaking different, but the same you know mm-hmm. when he's like telling her one thing and she's like oh yeah you know the kickback like gunpowder and he kind of pauses looks at her and he's like <laughs> yeah that's what I, you know that's what i'm talking about and then she starts going into the kind of baltimore lingo and i think he got lost but it came yep. back to you let me go ahead and get this one because this is what i need it for <laughs> oh, we do a couple jobs you know <laughs> we do eight that's so many i think 
in a really weird way. And even though I don't support the lifestyle and I don't want criminals to be happy, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> when Avon comes back home, okay, in season three, and Stringer takes him up to like the penthouse. Oh yeah. And he's like, this is on paper. Mm-hmm. It's all legit, man. It's Weird. all legit. And just, and then he gets those things like, this is a rental in case you, until you find out what you want to drive. And then when he walks out, you remember Stringer Bell walks out, comes back, knocks on the door and says, oh, I- <laughs> uh-huh. Ladies at the door. Oh yeah. And, and then they walk in and he closes the door and he looks and he's like, my man. And just <laughs> a moment for this dude who's been in prison and just got back home. And like, that's how we've all like, like I said, I'm not part of that life, but everybody envisions that's how you come home as the kingpin. Absolutely. Don't do your time. You come back, you come home and that's what it looks like. And I was like, okay, they got the fantasy. They got so, the- I kind of like um, when Cheese got killed toward mm-hmm. the series you know always felt he was kind of a snake kind of like prop joe you know well yeah yeah, yeah. Prop joe was a snake too. F- funny it's funny that he, you know one snake took another snake out mm-hmm. and um another scene it wasn't really on the actual show i don't know if you remember like during that last season they had these like little prequels. Mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah i like the um omar prequel when um him and his brother Nohar Anthony. Yeah. Uh, the guy at the um, at the bus stop, and he made him give him back the money. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, speaking of Nohar Anthony, there was another scene with Kima and McNulty that was like um, season Kima, one. Yeah, I can't believe y'all know who Nohar Anthony. Then they told a tale about the um, he robbed the jewelry store. Well, I have four written down. The scene where uh, Clay Davis is breaking it down. And he's like, I'm going to take any anybody's money he's handing out. Obviously, I'm going to take you. Uh, it's a fantastic scene. Um, uh, the balcony scene yes. with, with Avon and Stringer. And you just, you knew it was hanging in the air. They knew it was hanging in the air. It was this, like, it was this fantastic mix of, like, contempt for each other. But also still so much love mm-hmm. and, like, they're both so committed to their own path that even all even as they're discussing the history you know that it's 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 kind of already been decided I, that scene just really always stuck with me it felt incredibly i don't know real and hard in that you know whatever context of your life there's going to be people who like you thought were going to be with you forever and mm-hmm. you know diff- different paths take you different places and I, I just i love that scene still um Sort of from more of a comedy standpoint, Omar taking the stand in <laughs> season two, yeah. and where he got the shotgun, you got the briefcase uh, line, and and him trying to sort of explain the game and um, seeing the worlds really collide like that. You know, I think throughout a lot of the wire, there's these mm-hmm. amazing characters working within their own circles, but some of the best moments in the wire come when like those circles obviously clash and. What could have clashed more than Omar and, you know, the courtroom fantastic scene. And then ultimately I, it's boring. I'm sure everyone has mentioned it, but season one, episode three, where D'Angelo's explaining chess and King stays the King. It's just so iconic. 